Welcome back to the channel everybody. I'm Trevor with Maker Experiment and in today's video we're going to be making some custom maps using snazzy maps. Let's get into it. I got the inspiration for this project from Epilogue's Sample Club. If you don't know about Epilogue Sample Club, on their website they have a section where they have made different projects throughout the years and they will document step by step how you do the process so that you can make your own version of that item. The biggest takeaway from these sample clubs is that you can take those steps and apply it to your own project. And that's what I did here. For this project, they wrote a full article of how to do this in both Adobe Illustrator and CorelDRAW. I'm going to leave links to those in the description below in case you would like to try this for yourself. Keep in mind that they did this project years ago. They did do a YouTube video on it if you wanna see the, the actual design process of it. What I wanna show in this video is building off of their steps. I'm not gonna show the full design process because they've already documented that pretty well. What I wanna show is just taking those steps, creating my own version, and then making my own project. I do wanna mention that this process uses snazzy maps, which involves having to trace and things like that, which can be kind of cumbersome and not turn out as good as you want. There's another software that's a little bit more laser specific called Laser Map Maker. I will leave a link in the description for that as well. And that will gear it more towards the laserable layers that we're used to seeing. I did do all of the design for this one in snazzy maps and did all the tracing, but Playing around with Laser Map Maker also shows that that process can be a lot easier. Let's start off by going over to the computer and I will show you what I did for my design. The first step is to go to snazzymaps.com. Here, you can go in here, you can explore styles, create a style, build a map. If you type in epilogue into the search bar, You'll see a few different options, one with reverse, one with map and thick lines, and one with thin lines. I started off using the one with thick lines. When you go in here, if you start zooming out, you'll see the map as a whole with streets and things like that, and you can modify whatever you want, which is what I did based off of what I learned from their tutorial. And once you start getting the pre-populated areas, I clicked on the first one. It took me to Las Vegas, the area that I wanted to use. And there's always a cool part of Las Vegas that had a neat road pattern to me and it had a park around it and things like that. So what I did was I went over here to customize and I went to my roads because that is one of the thicker things on here. And then I went to stroke and you can change the level of the stroke you can see here under all weight. Drag that down a little bit and you'll see some of those start to decrease. And you're gonna have to figure out which type of road has the higher weights. So in this case, my guess is that it is the arterial and that looks to be what it is. So drag that down too. So this gives us a little bit better view. Now you may wanna increase the strokes in order to get a cuttable line and things like that. I mostly did engraving in my project, so it wasn't as big of a deal. But you can see here, one of the areas that I liked is this one here where it had some water, it had the roads, but it also had these little you know, swoops and waves with circular dead ends and things like that that I thought were kinda of cool. For the parks, I turned on the fill under parks, and then I also changed it to a custom color. And I just chose a different color than the water and the black, so that I could instantly see what was land versus what was water. The next thing I did was I saved that image and brought it into Adobe Illustrator. That's kind of the shortened version of their steps. If you go over to Epilogue's website and you go to resources and sample club, you can scroll down here to the bottom where it says wood. Scroll down again, and you'll see the customized end tables. This is the project that they did with the map. So if you click on that, you'll be able to scroll down here and you'll see that they have prepared the artwork in both Corel and Illustrator. 
I clicked on Illustrator and then it brought me to the full tutorial of exactly how they did the process. So this will walk you through everything you need to know. Again, I'm not gonna spend time on that, but I did wanna mention that that's where I got all of this from. The other reason I wanted to mention Epilogue is they are the sponsor of this video. I've been using Epilogue machinery for over 10 years and have found it to be one of the best machines on the market. They still have their sale on now if you click on sale on their front page. They have some specials on the Edge and the Pro that end on November 29th, but if you're in the market for a laser and you're trying to have some of the tax breaks for your business before the end of the year, this could be a great opportunity to get a great machine, but also some great accessories. But if you're interested in learning more, you can go to epiloglaser.com slash maker dash experiment to find out more. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer everything that you'd like to know. Once you follow the steps, you'll end up with a map that you can laser cut, laser engrave, whatever it is that you might like to do. This is my version of what came out of Snazzy Maps. Now, when it came out of Snazzy Maps, it was a PNG. So I did file, place, and then if I go to my downloads, that's where I had it. And you'll see that it comes in really large the way that I exported it. You'll see that I had the water, you'll see that I had the parks and things like that. I also had all the roads. Now, the tricky part with using Snazzy Maps is the tracing is not very intuitive and not very good. You have to play around with it a lot in order to get something that's pretty passable. But if you go to the trace tool in Illustrator, other tools may have a little bit better of a tracing function. But if I hit the preview button, you'll see that it immediately got rid of a bunch of stuff. So the first thing I had to do was change it to color. And then once I changed it to color, you'll have to scale back how many colors that you want to use, because otherwise you could end up with, say, 10 shades of green because of the park. It really depends on how it interprets it. This one did an okay job at the default of 30, but you'll see that the roads are really blurred. So I had to up the paths to have more of them. And then I also kind of had to do the same thing with corners. I had to adjust the noise until I got to something that I was happy with that I could actually export. I'm not gonna bore you with all of that stuff, but I wanted to show you kind of the tools that you have to use. You'll have to slide the bars back and forth. You might have to change the colors. You might have to do some other things, but the tutorial should walk you through adjusting that image. My problem with Snazzy Maps is it's not the most straightforward or cleanest way to do something for laser machining. Uh, you have to use that tracing function. If you struggle with design, this one may be a little bit of a challenge, but I do encourage you to try it because you'll learn a lot about how your tracing function works and what does well and what doesn't do well. From here, I made three different maps. I made one that was engraved on wood, one that's engraved on acrylic, and another one on acrylic where I color filled some things. And I will show you the process for all of those in a time lapse. But from here, what I did is I sent it over to my laser. I don't have the laser turned on right now, so the camera won't show. But you'll see that it separated it into a green layer, a blue layer, a black layer, and then the red layer. From there, I put in different settings depending on the look that I wanted. So the blue I engraved first, I wanted it a little bit lighter. Then I engraved the green to be a little bit darker, the black a little bit darker, and then the red was the cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what that looks like. But I used a variety of settings for different materials. If you don't know what settings to use, I'm actually going to link a video up in the cards to a video I just did about finding settings for your machine. And that might give you a great step forward in how I did what I'm doing here. So let's go ahead and machine all of the maps and I will show you what they look like.
Now that I have all of the maps off the machine, I'm gonna show you what each one turned out like after I clean it up with just a shop rag with a little bit of water on it. Here is the first one. So this one is on alder wood that is laminated. So this front face is a laminate layer. The back face is a laminate layer. And all I did was laser engrave this one, but you can see some of that road detail. I did a different shade for the water. I did another shade for some of the parks and things like that, but a little bit of a cool contrast to try to use different settings to get different results. Next up was the black acrylic. So this one, same thing. I tried to do different tones for the engraving by adjusting my settings. So the water has a different look than the roads do. And so do the parks as well. And then I think what is my favorite one is the clear acrylic one that I paint filled. So you'll see in the video that I used a paint marker to fill it. The big trick here is you don't want to engrave it too deep that the color doesn't show through, but because you're engraving it, some of that color kind of has a texture to it when you finish it. You could also laser cut the film off and then just paint directly on the acrylic without ever engraving the acrylic. That's definitely an option that I've used in the past, but this one I engraved and you'll see let me actually put the black one up here behind it so it's very clear to see. You can see I colored the water blue, the park's green. The roads are actually just engraved. This is how clear cast acrylic will look when you engrave it. It's gonna have that nice frosty white look. But those are the three maps that I created using this map technique. And the cool part about learning how to use maps is you can use them for all kinds of products. You can use them for wall art, you can use them in coasters, ornaments, all kinds of things that you can then sell to your customers or even make things for yourself to hang on the wall. The whole purpose of this video is to encourage you to take things that you find on sample clubs and things like that and put your own spin on the project to make something new that will apply to your business and things that you can do moving forward. It will also teach you a lot of skills following tutorials like this that may not be as easy to learn without having that step-by-step -step guide. So it can really shorten the learning curve. But that's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you know when I come out with new videos. Be sure to check out my Instagram at Maker Experiment where I share things along the way. But I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video and I'll see you in the next one.